and here is your hitch and your A-frame. So when you're going to connect the vehicle up to your van, you want to reverse up. You can adjust the height of your jockey wheel to raise and lower the hitch. You can then wind your hitch down onto your tow ball. Now you do need to hold this secondary lever up until the tow ball slots inside there. When you release it, it should click on and this wee red button will pop up and there'll be a green ring around there so you know that it's secured on properly. You can then push your secondary lever down. There are some Elkart brake pads in here that squeeze in onto the tow ball, keeping it nice and secure. Underneath here, you've got a standard seven pin trailer plug. Now you do also have this additional auxiliary cord. Now this is designed that you can wire these two together to a 12 pin trailer plug um, for when you're wanting to run the fridge off 12 volt, but we'll go more into that when we get to the fridge. You've got your breakaway cable. So this is designed to loop around your tow ball and clip back onto itself. It just sits underneath there. This is so that if for some reason this hitch ever gave way, this breakaway cable will pull, it'll snap off and it'll put your handbrake on to stop the van rolling down the road. Now your handbrake, just like a car, push down for off, pull it up for on. Once you've got your hitch all hooked onto your vehicle, you can then get your jockey wheel out of the way. So what you need to do is wind your jockey wheel up so that these arms slot into these grooves on the side here. So that winds the jockey wheel all the way up and stops it from spinning around while you're towing the van. You can then undo this top handle and pull the whole jockey wheel unit up so that the wheel is resting against your A-frame. You can then tighten that up so it's nice and high and out of the way. When you go to unhitch the van from your vehicle, you're going to do that in reverse. So you're going to undo the handle, drop the jockey wheel down, tighten it up. You then lift your secondary lever. You then have to lift and hold this first lever while you wind your jockey wheel up and raise this off your vehicle. If you don't hold this handle up, it won't release the tow ball correctly. So just make sure you hold it up nice and high. In behind your A-frame here is your front locker. So you've got your spare wheel in here. You've got space for two nine kilo gas bottles. As you can see, they only connect on one end, so you will have to manually switch them over. Your barbecue, it's much like a barbecue connection. It's just sort of a spin on connection for your gas bottles. If for some reason you ever want to shut the gas off entirely at the source, you can just push this yellow handle all the way around past your wheel there, and that'll turn the gas off. Just make sure you open it back up again when you do want to use it. Um, you do have a leg winder in here. So this is designed for the four stabilizers, one on each corner of your van. So you can wind them up and down. And then just in the corner there is your mains power cord. So that is for when you're wanting to plug into a campground and use the 240 volt. Now these lockers are open to the elements. They do have some we vents in and around them so don't store anything in here that you don't want getting sort of dusty and damp also these front lockers do have a payload of about 20 to 23 kilos so to be honest by the time you've got two nine kilo gas bottles in here along with your spare wheel you won't really have much weight left for anything else so just be really careful you don't overload this front locker as it will affect the towing of your van just up on the front corner of your van here in this locker this is where your 12 volt battery is. You don't really have to worry about that, it sort of does its own thing, but this is where it is if you ever do need to disconnect it or change it out. On the left here, this is where your mains power plugs into. So you've got your mains power cord here, lift that cap back. There is a groove on the van that corresponds to the one on the cord here, so it does only go on the one way. You can just wiggle it in and release it up the top there. And as you can see, there is a groove inside the locker and the door here so you can pop your cord in there shut that up lock your locker it keeps the weather out and it stops anyone being able to get to your battery or your mains power just next to your battery locker here um, this is your main water housing so you've got your fresh water barrel so you wheel that away fill it up undo the cap on the top you've then got your water pump so you're going to drop your pump pick up all the way down to the bottom of the barrel and you do have a wee cap here that you can sit on the top to keep dust and leaves and bits and pieces out. Then with your top of your pump, so it only goes on the one way, push that in. Just give it a wee wiggle. You can see it slots into the top here, so you can just drop that down. Once you've got that all 
plugged in and your barrel is full you can then go inside and turn your water pump on um, now it is important that because these freshwater barrels don't have a gauge on them that you do keep a good eye on how empty they're getting i wouldn't really get it let it get below sort of quarter of the way empty just because um, if your pump comes up out of the water it will run it dry um, so really important that you keep an eye on that just here um, you click this up at the bottom and pop it off this is the vent for your water heater when it's running on gas so you only need to take this travel cover off when you're actively running the water heater on gas you will get some warm to hot air coming out of here that's completely normal when you're towing the van or not using the water heater do make sure you pop it on at the top and click it at the bottom just so it's on nice and firmly this stops um, any sort of dust or dirt getting in there and also spiders like to crawl in there and create webs um, which can really clog, clog up the lines um, and affect how your gas hot water light. So just behind your wheel here on the same side um, is your grey water outlet so you want to pop this cap off got your grey water hose here so push that on and then you have to pull these cam lock levers around now they are brand new so they can be a wee bit stiff so pop that on there then at the bottom here this is where you pop the pipe for your breather once you've got that set up make sure you've got your valves in the open position um, you all do also have a valve underneath the van here there's a gauge on the top of this caddy so you can keep an eye on the level when you go to empty it it is a good idea to turn this valve underneath the van into the closed position just so no residual grey water is going to come out onto the ground close these valves take the pipe out at the bottom unhook your hose you can then wheel this away to empty it and under this flap here you do have a bungee cord so you can strap your grey water caddy through these eyelets to the chassis or the wheel to stop it rolling around in the wind or you can pop your toilet cassette on here and strap that in if you need to empty both at the dump station at the same time and then you do also have a wee cap and a spout so you can take the cap off at the bottom pop this on and it'll give you a nice direct pull when you go to empty it up on the back corner here this is the where you pop the fresh water for your toilet flush um, it generally depending on the model it takes about 8 to 10 litres but it is more of a visual reference so when you start to get water in that trough you know that it's getting nice and full there is a pink toilet chemical that goes in here so you pop that in with your water it helps with smell and it also helps lubricate all the seals inside the pump there underneath here is your toilet cassette so when you go to empty it, just pull it up, pull this yellow lever up here and slide it out. Now these three items here are operated inside the van, so you don't need to worry about those. But when you go to empty your toilet cassette, spin the spout out. If you have any issues getting this cap off, you do have a wee air release valve at the bottom here that you can push. And then that cap should come off no problem. You can empty your toilet cassette. And then on your cap here you do have some measurements so that is designed to measure out the blue toilet chemical this again helps the smell but it's designed to help break everything in your cassette down so it's nice and easy to empty so you can measure that in here pop that in bring the caddy back to your van and just slide it in and just make sure it clicks in behind that ridge again so it's nice and secure the only other thing to know about in this locker is up the top here, this little bung you, in the winter especially, but when you're storing it in, you need to take your cassette out, sit a bucket in here and then pull this bung out. That will drain all the water out of your toilet flush tank. It's really important you do that. It stops your pump sitting in water for a long time and seizing and it also helps prevent any frost damage as well. Just up on the front corner of the door side of your van, if you slide up this wee piece at the front here, this here is a gas outlet for if you want to run a barbecue off the gas bottles inside your front locker. Um, there's a little 
fitting that you can get that pops into there and then you can run a hose from the van to your barbecue. Um, one thing to know is you can't have a regulator on the hose that runs from the van to your barbecue as the gas bottles are already regulated inside that front locker. So if you do double regulate it, it won't work. Now just as you come in the door directly in front of you here, up the top, um, this middle switch is for your 12 volt power. So if you click it down to van, that'll liven up your 12 volt power. Um, and you'll also liven up the little battery meter at the top here. Now this meter was already on because we've got mains power plugged in. But if you've got no mains power plugged in, um, that'll be down at the red until you pop that 12 volt switch on. The left here, this aux switch, um, was for a section of the radio, but it's no longer wired up, so you don't have to worry about that one. And then on the right hand side here is for your water pump. So once you've got your fresh water barrel all filled up and your pump plugged in, you can come in, flick that on. Um, it is a good idea to open up all your taps, especially if you haven't used the van in a while, just to get out any residual air. Um, and then that system will pressurise and you'll be good to go. Like I said before, there is no gauge, so do keep an eye on the fresh water barrel. And when you go to fill it up again, make sure you turn the pump off on the inside before you do. Now just below that here, um, this is the isolator switch for your battery charger. It's currently in the on position. To be honest, you don't really even need to turn this off. It's just a good idea to leave it on in the background. The battery charger is designed for that whenever you're on mains power, it is actively charging up your deep cycle battery. And just below that here is your RCDs. So if you do have any trouble with 240 volts, just come in um, and check that none of these are tripped and that they're all in the upwards position. So just below your RCDs and bits and pieces here is your oven top. So pop that glass all the way back. And then you've got four gas elements here. So for those controls, they're just along the side here. So you've got two elements and then two elements again and this control in the middle is for your grill on the front of the oven so much like a barbecue you want to push um, and hold the dial turn it to the highest flame and then press and hold the igniter once it's lighted you can release the igniter and that button and then you can adjust your temperature from there and then it's just back to the circle for off so that's the same for all five of these controls just push, turn and hold, hit your igniter, and then adjust your temperature from there. Now, it's really important once you've finished using these elements that you make sure the elements and all this wiring is cool to the touch. Because it has been known in the past, if you pop this glass lid down when they're still hot, they can shatter. So this here is your grill. It's a wee bit hard to see, but it'll ignite along that rod down the middle there. And then we've got your oven. So your oven's got its wee control here. So push, turn and hold at the temperature you would like. And then you have to hit the igniter that's on the top of your oven. So it operates the whole oven grill element system. You can then release, adjust your temperature and back to the circle for off. Your oven will ignite just along the back there, just behind that wee rail piece. Now, for your fridge here, up on the left hand side, this is for when you're running the fridge on 240 volt. So when you want to run the fridge on mains power, click that wee green button. It's a wee bit hard to see, but it does light up. You've then got your temperature control for mains power here from 1 right round to 7, 7 being the coldest. Once you've got that all turned on, as long as you've got mains power plugged in, the fridge will start to cool. The wee red button here, this is to run your fridge off battery. So when you flick that on, you can see it doesn't light up as it's not connected. So what you need to do is have your trailer plug and the auxiliary plug wired together to become a 12 pin trailer plug. An auto electrician can do this for you as they also need to change the wiring on your vehicle. So this operating mode is designed that you can cool the fridge down on either 240 volt or gas the night before. And then once you hook up your van and plug your trailer plug in, you can switch it to battery and it'll maintain the temperature that the fridge currently is. It will not cool the fridge down from warm. The fridge already has to be cold and it'll maintain that temperature. Um, so that is an additional thing that you can get wired up if you like. On the right hand side of your fridge, this is the controls to run your fridge on gas. So you can push 
this button, this dial, I suppose, on the left, push it in, turn and hold it at the little gas icon. This here is your igniter, so push and click that. And to be able to know if your fridge has lit on gas, you'll need to open it up. So with this door lock, you want to press the green piece in until that pops up, and it'll unlock your fridge door. And then just down the bottom here is a wee sight glass. So while you're holding that dial and hitting your igniter, you need to be keeping an eye on here and you should get sort of a blue flame. Once you release that dial and stop hitting your igniter, it should kick into a nice bright orange flame. That way you know that your fridge has ignited on gas. Once you've got it lit, you can then adjust your temperature from one right round to five. And then when you wanna turn it off on gas, just turn it back to the wee circle. Just down in front of your seat here is the controls to run your room heater on 240 volt. So up the top here, you've got your on button. Now, as you can see, you get a very faint green light and then it sort of powers down. So if it does that and doesn't stay solid, you need to make sure that this switch underneath your main isolator switch is turned on. And as you can see, that green light stays on. On the left hand side, you have got your you've got 2000 watts a thousand watts or 500 watts so it just depends on how quickly you want your room heater to heat up so you can select one of those and then you can select your temperature from five right round to 30 degrees there and then you can just click that back off when you need to this here is your actual room heater unit so up on the right here is to run your 12 volt fan so you've got automatic is the wee A at the bottom. So there are temperature sensors in here. So you can select your fan speed from one right round to five at the top. Select your temperature on either gas or 240 volt. And then the fan will kick in and out as it's needed to maintain the temperature that you've selected. Uh, the circle in the middle is off. And then to the left is continuous. So you can have your fan continuously running to pump the heat round. Or you can have the fan on it on its own and it'll just circulate room temperature air. Um, now when you've got the fan on, it will pump the heat out through these ducts around the van. On the left here is to run your room heater on gas. So you want to spin this dial, normally spin it up quite high to about 10. You then, this is also your purge button, so you need to push and hold that in and then hit your igniter there. It's a bit hard with one hand, but if you push that in, hit your igniter and while you're doing that have a wee look at your sight glass down here so about this far down and about 25 mils in there's a piece of glass that matches the shape of this little hole so you can look through there while you're holding that purge button and hitting your igniter again just like the fridge you should see a wee blue flame and then once you hold that purge button for a couple more seconds and then release it it should kick in to a nice bright orange flame so you know that your heater has ignited and you can then adjust your temperature from one right round to 10. When you want to turn the heater off on gas, you've got your zero and then you just push it ever so slightly past the zero, almost like it's going back round to 10 and that'll make sure that your heater is turned off on gas. Just in front of your seat on the opposite side to your room heater controls, these are the controls for your water heater. So down the bottom here, we've got to run your water heater on 240 volt. So as long as you've got 240 volt plugged in, you can come and flick that on and that'll start to heat your water up on 240 volt. Up the top here is to run your water heater on gas. So you want to flick that on. You'll hear a click underneath your front seat. That's your water heater trying to ignite. You've then got your temperature from 30 right around to 70. As you can see, we've had this wee red light come up. That means that the water heater has failed to ignite on gas. So there's a few things you need to check. You need to check that your gas bottles are connected, that they've still got gas left in them. And the other thing, as you can see, is actually written on here. You need to make sure that that travel cover has been removed. Um, otherwise, it won't ignite properly. So turn that off, go and check those things. And then when you come back in and flick that on, you should be good to go. Now this grey unit here under your front seating is your water heater unit. You don't need to worry much about it, it'll do its own thing based on those controls that you've selected. The only thing to know is just down the side here, this little yellow lever. This is for when you're storing the van again, especially over winter. You need to come in, flick this lever up, 
and also open up all your taps and that is going to drain all the water out of your water heater and your water system. Um, good idea just to leave that in your taps up while you're not at the van so it'll drain all the water out the bottom. When you come back to use the van just make sure you come in and flick that back down. Nothing drastic will happen if you don't, it just means that when you turn on your water pump all your fresh water is just going to pump straight out the bottom of your van. This here is the inside of your toilet, so your toilet bowl does swivel so you can push it out of the way if you're using the shower or the vanity and then you can adjust it to fit your legs in. Up the top here you do have a little light that will start to flash at you when your toilet cassette is getting full so you know when to empty it. You've also got your flush up the top here so when you hit that flush button it'll flush down into the toilet. Then you've got your grey lever at the front here so you slide that round and that opens up your toilet so push it sort of towards the door and it opens up. Now once you've finished using the toilet you've flushed everything away it's really important that you then slot this lever into the closed position, so sort of facing towards the shower. Um, there is a seal on here, so it seals up and stops the smell, but your toilet cassette will not come out of its outside locker unless the toilet is closed on the inside. So if you go to take your toilet cassette out and you're feeling a bit of resistance, just make sure you hop back in the van and check that the toilet is closed.